being able to create that buy-in with a good understanding, um, being able mm -hmm. for me as the sustainability leader to not operate in a vacuum and mm -hmm. receive input and thoughts from all of the associates, from the CEO and the board who are very passionate about it. Um, I'm just one person and I, I don't want to yeah. make these decisions alone. And so mm -hmm. I think um, getting that buy-in and really getting people to feel like they're a part of the process and also being able to see what is um, resonates with others within the organization, whether it be the CEO mm -hmm. or finance leader, um, helping get that input into the process as well. Mm -hmm. Yeah, absolutely. And I guess, you know, being confident as well with the when you're doing those decisions, you're doing that with the right, right information and right data. So there is so much data out there and <laughs> it's ever evolving, especially today in a mm -hmm. politically charged and pandemic cli um, climate. So um, it's something that we could have never done on our own. Um, we're a very small team. Mm -hmm. that's not something it would have been impossible for us to go mine that data. Um, yeah. The alternative is bringing someone in to manually do the work for us, mm -hmm. um, which we have done in the past several years ago, but it's very, very costly and very, very uh, time consuming. And mm -hmm. so I think that's where data Moran has helped with us being able to gather all that data in a very short time frame um, mm -hmm. and, and put it all together in a, in a, with a good picture. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Well, I think um, it's sustainability um, and our material topics really are out front and center, even with um, the financial potential struggles everyone is facing. Um, invest investors are not giving up. In fact, I'm seeing an increase in um, a push for focused on these material aspects um, to bring resilience. Um, they are looking for companies uh, that can be resilient. And so I think it's and, and, and it's not just mm -hmm. investors. I think our CEO wants a company that's going to be resilient um, mm -hmm. and long-term sustainable. Yep. And so I think we need to make sure that we are focusing on those efforts that are material to us. We need to be able to monitor any potential mm -hmm. changes so that we can be fluid and shift our focus as needed. So we, we finalized our materiality assessment, I believe, towards the end of February. Mm -hmm. And we can see what's going on through this chart, um, whether we look at all issues. Uh, these are just some of the, the top issues where we've seen change. And you can see product stewardship was one of our, um, one of our tier one topics, mm -hmm. as well as product sustainability. And so that was our level of importance. And we can check in and, and see where they're trending and then mm -hmm. also see what is driving that trend. So product sustainability is coming more from a supplier standpoint, mm -hmm. uh, where product stewardship is, is more from a peer standpoint. Mm -hmm. So I guess that's useful as well to, for you to have this kind of information when you share that with your, you know, different subject matter expert as well to understand, well, you know, this is the trend. And, you know, this is the driver as well. So you can you really kind of approach that issue with the right people internally as well. Exactly. And, you know, this is not a, a one-time process mm -hmm. for us. It's, um, we, we need to be fluid and we need to be able to, I think I mentioned it before, be able to change direction or apply more focus to a certain area if we see, um, the need to. I, yes. I don't imagine establishing 2030 goals and sitting back and waiting to see what yeah. happens. <laughs> so um, I think I think it's going to be really important to continue to monitor this mm -hmm. and be able to update my leadership as well as our associates. Absolutely. 
Um, Sydney, um, what advice would you give to um, to those who would like to share updates about their material issues to their CEOs and um, other stakeholders internally? Well, I think what I've learned through this process is I think communication is key. And mm -hmm. um, I've, I said it early on to get that buy-in support, um, really helping people understand um, what the process is and what, I mean, a lot of people have never seen a materiality matrix in the past. And mm -hmm. a question came from one of my board members uh, about that, that concept that those in the lower left quadrant are not important because, yeah. are they not important because they're not a tier one material topic? So I think it's very important to, to think through and understand that majority of people, unless they're in this field or focused in it, have not worked with a materiality assessment. Mm -hmm. And so being able to really communicate well on what those tier one material topics are versus those table stakes topics mm -hmm. and what it means. It doesn't mean it's not important. Mm -hmm. It just means that you it's in a different You have to keep an eye area. on it. Yeah. 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 Like but that. I think I just... I don't think there is too much communication. Um, like I said, that end goal should be embedding sustainability mm -hmm. within the organization. And in order to do that, everybody needs to be able, feel a part of it yeah, and participate. Involved. Yeah, and have the information to do that as well. Yes. Mm -hmm.